Blessings in Jesus, friends, and welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Glory be to God, the Eternal One, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we are continuing our study today in the book of Galatians. We are still in chapter 1, and we are going to begin at verse 11 today. Now, much of what we're going to discuss has already been addressed in previous videos, so I will not spend a lot of time on these areas, but there are some specific things that we want to look at today and we want to mention, especially from other passages of Scripture. So let's begin at chapter 1 and verse 11 of the book Galatians. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it by men, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, we've discussed this in previous videos, and basically Paul is reedifying the fact that he has not received his education, his spiritual education from men. He did his traditional education, but not his spiritual education. He received it directly from the Lord Jesus in the third heaven as Jesus himself sat in the throne room of God Almighty. He says in verse 13, You have heard of my conversation or my behavior in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Now, in order to better understand this, all we have to do is look at the book of Acts, and let's look at chapter 8 and verse 3. It says, As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and helling men and women committed them to prison. Chapter 9, verse 1, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, any of these so-called Christians, whether they were men or women, he might bring them back bound unto Jerusalem. And the story continues with Paul's conversion. As he travels to Damascus, the Lord Jesus intercepts him, and from that day forward, Paul is no longer the same man. And so Paul is reminding them of that here in verse 13. He says, you've heard of my behavior that in times past in the Jews' religion. Now, what is the Jews' religion? Well, we're going to address that in verse 14 and 15. But he says, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and I wasted it. In verse 14, he says, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Now in Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 4, Paul says, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinks that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. I've been circumcised the eighth day, as Jews are. I'm from the stock of Israel. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I am a Hebrew of the Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. And so what Paul is pointing out here is the fact that among his fellow religious leaders of Israel, he has excelled in education, in practice, in discipline, and in observance to the Jewish tradition far above all of them. And notice in verse 14, he says, I've profited in the Jews' religion more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Do you remember in Matthew chapter 15, verse 2, when Jesus says unto the Pharisees, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, as we mentioned in the first video, this is where we're going to get into the controversy of the two laws, the laws that were given by God to Moses and the laws that these rabbis and leaders of Israel created after Moses died, better known as the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D. And if you're unfamiliar with it, I would highly encourage you to do some research on it. It's available on the internet. 
to better understand what the Talmud is and why Jesus was so vehemently against it. Because if you're familiar with the book of John, especially, this is the one single issue that Jesus opposed the spiritual leaders with the most. The commandments and teachings of men as opposed to the commandments and teaching of his father, the eternal one, the ageless one, God Almighty. And so Paul continues in verse 15. He says, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now, Paul is quoting from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 and verse 5. He says, listen, O isles, unto me and hearken you people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Verse 5, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again unto him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Jeremiah 1.5 also says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And so Paul is making the same claim here that God being in control of all things, even though the first part of Paul's life was outside the perfect will of God, God had appointed Paul for this position that he's about to take a preacher unto the heathen, unto the Gentiles, unto these pagan nations even before he was formed in his mother's womb. He goes on in verse 16, he says, He did this to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, among the Gentiles, among the pagans, among any other that is called anything other than a Jew. And then he says something very interesting. He says, Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Isn't that our tendency? When God does something monumental in our lives, we immediately want to share it with others. But Paul says, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. Neither did I go up to Jerusalem, which is where the disciples were housed, to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia, and I returned again unto Damascus. Now we address this and we'll skip over it. But what Paul is saying is I went into a private place. I went into a place where I could spend time with the Lord and did not confer with men, even those who were the disciples who walked with Jesus, as important as that would have been. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. So for the first three years of Paul's conversion, he was alone with the Lord. He spent no time with the leaders of the church. And who is the very first person that he goes to see? It's Peter. Out of all the disciples, Paul picks Peter. He wants to go to Peter because Peter is the rock that the church has been founded upon. And he says, I abode with Peter for 15 days, verse 19. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Outside of Peter, who else would you want to see? But the brother of the Lord. He who grew up with the Lord, that knew the Lord Jesus before his ministry and after his ministry. And what's interesting is James did not become a believer in the Lord Jesus. He did not become a follower of the Lord Jesus until after Jesus was resurrected. In verse 20, Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Now, most likely, these are Gentile churches that were formed before Paul began his ministry, because in the day of Pentecost, men from all nations were present, and we're told over 5,000 came to become followers of the Lord Jesus. And so as they left Jerusalem from this Jewish celebration and went back to their cities, they took this message of Jesus with them and these early churches were formed. He says in verse 23, But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. And so basically, they had heard the story of how Paul was persecuting the church, and yet now Paul is becoming a leader in the church. He's fighting for the very thing he once fought against. Can you remember the days of your life when you did the same? 
There was a time when you mocked the church, when you cursed Jesus, when you weren't a believer, and yet here you are now in love with the very one that you persecuted, seeking a relationship with the very one that you cursed, praying to the very one that you did not believe in. As 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 tells us, such were some of you, but you are now washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. As we are told in Ephesians 2, 13, you who were once afar off now have been made near because of the blood of Christ. Do you remember those days of darkness? Do you remember those days of rebellion? Do you remember those days of confrontation with God? I can tell you, friend, I certainly do. And I'm so thankful that he didn't give up on me. But he continues to offer me his hand of fellowship, reconciliation, and redemption. And so in the opening portion of this letter, what we see is Paul eliminating any arguments that can be made against him so that when he begins to really speak to us and relay to us things that will help us become better followers of the Lord Jesus, that will deepen our walk, that will broaden our minds and better understanding what it means to be his follower, that there will be no walls of argument that can be established keeping one from the truth. And so as we enter into the heart of this letter, we must understand that the opening portion of the letter is meant to do just that. Paul is simply establishing himself as a member in the family of God, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as an apostle and a preacher of the message that he can take unto the world around him. And because most knew him before he was, like Jesus said, a prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. And the reason for that is, is because people knew who you were before you were a prophet. They see your humanity, not your spiritual anointing. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, don't look at my past and see my humanity See the spiritual anointing that the Lord has placed upon me so that I can minister unto you as the Lord would have me to do. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of our study today, friends. And let me end by this today, maybe a word of encouragement. You may not be the person that you want to be, but praise God, you're not the person that you used to be. And so don't beat yourself up by the mistakes that you may be making Continue, as Paul told us in Philippians, to put those things behind you and press toward the goal of the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about how many times you have failed. Get up, brush your knees off, and keep pressing for excellence and perfection in your walk with the Lord Jesus. Now may your journey be blessed today, friend. May you walk in the Spirit with your mind upon the things of God. And in all things, bring him glory and honor. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.